Welcome Tangle Friends, Annie Riser here. This week I'm late posting my Lunchtime Tangle series because I was very busy teaching some in-person classes that were wonderful, but also because I allowed myself three incredible hikes, including the one that was basically kind of hunting some wildflowers that are so spectacular this year due to the wet conditions we had in the spring. I just needed to show you because I know you appreciate beauty and are inspired by nature just like I am. So these are some columbines, Colorado columbines that were all along our hike for miles, groves and groves of them. I just, I could not believe it. I've never seen anything like it. So I had to share it with you. In keeping with our floral theme, we're going to do a floral organic pattern. This one is called Hollis, and I decided to do it in color on one of my um, dyed papers here that I love so much because I, I just really like shading in color. Here is a sample that I worked up that I'm going to be kind of patterning this off of. So just want you to know you don't have to do this in color you are welcome to just use black and white and it's going to be just as beautiful and you can shade just the way i'm using my color shading you can shade with your graphite and blend with your tortillon you won't need a solvent blender like i will be using here so for the materials that we have i have my 140 pound hot press watercolor paper that i've already colored and i've got a prismacolor solvent blender because I'm going to be blending my colored pencils which is just an array of the colors that I'm finding here in the background. I've also got a white General's charcoal and and or a white colored pencil and then I uh, have my white jelly roll as well to add some embellishment at the end besides my 01 Sakura black micron pen. This okay. is how Hollis goes. It's very much like the Tangle Mucha, but with less of a prominent head or, I don't know, curl. So I'm going to just start, because I want to fill out this whole area with the pattern, I'm going to start down here in the corner and I'm going to take off and do sort of a Mucha, but thinner, with less of a pronounced... Um, head up here, taking my time and I'm breathing. And then we're going to jump off the back of this. Um, I'm going to get this to look at to see what I did. I kind of like what I did. I'm going to jump off the back right here. I'm going to start here and do another muka. And we're just going to continue oring this line so it's kind of built up, almost doubled there. Well, it is doubled. And I'm going to start on another one over here. Just doing this in kind of an arbitrary way. And again. So instead of stopping here, I'm just continuing on. And this kind of beefs up the stem a little bit. I think I remember uh, Rick saying he was inspired by an Asian vase he saw in a museum that had this pattern on it. And then he, he liked it so much that he stepped it out. So here we go. And I'm actually, I am such a mooka maniac that I'm actually making these quite a bit thicker um, here I can see I tried to stay more in tune with the true Hollis look is more like this okay uh, but I think that's a nice variation you can do whatever you want I'm going to turn my paper and go this way It's going to go off. So 
So I think this is enough for now. We are going to utilize these beautiful little V-shaped spaces from the branch work that we have drawn to add Hollis. I'm sorry, not Hollis, to add, uh, there's a couple different things you could add in there, several actually. In this one I used henna drum and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. But Zentangle also has a pattern called Moon Pie that works really well in there too. So let's just start drawing some henna drums. I'm gonna go down here and make one, two, three, lines and this one closest to the center I'm going to give it a stripe and then I'm going to complete my henna flower by starting in the middle and making those little jaggedy petals that sort of are array around almost a crescent shape. You can also do some eyelash strokes in here to give it a little character, maybe a little dot here and there. And I'm gonna continue on doing that. I'm waiting my lines here a little bit at the bottom just to delineate the petals a bit. And I'm doing the eyelash stroke. I'm also gonna wait this area here. I just think that adds something. And then continue on filling each of these areas the same way. Oh, one other thing that I did do, I did do an aura line around this outer petals of the henna drum because we're going to go back in there with our little white jelly roll and make dots, which is so decorative. Okay, here's this. I'm gonna do my striping, or beetle juice, I think we call that. Wait these lines. Some eyelash strokes. A little bit of hatching just gives it some shading. Doesn't look quite so flat. And then I'm gonna just give this an aura. And I like to weight this area here a little bit. So I'm going to continue filling out all of these spaces here that form a V and I will continue making each of the henna drums the same way and I will be back and we will talk about how we would shade. So I'm looking at this and comparing it to this and I'm really liking what's going on here and here. So I need to have a few more uh, tendrils, Hollis tendrils coming out to create some of that more interesting um, layering up of these hennas. So now I think I've got them all and one thing I did on this one, I've also added some fescues in between. These mimic the original Hollis stroke. So 
So you see I've added some more here just to make that overlapping uh, henna interesting. And I would say that's looking pretty good. I'm ready to shade. So if you were doing this with graphite, you're just going to take your graphite pencil and shade the same place as I do with my colored pencils. I'm using the colored pencil that is a little bit darker. For example, here, I want to have it look like shading. So instead of using um, yellow here, I would use something that's a little darker than that. So I think actually this is going to work really well. We want to give this tendril kind of an undercut. Go all the way down. And do some here on the henna. So if you've been watching my videos, you know I love henna drum and that I have already shown you how to shade colored henna drums. This is not quite dark enough for me, so I'm going to go over the top of that with this darker red. It's kind of a poppy red. Basically, we want to get we want to find the underside more so than this top side here, for example. So I would go here. This is the underside of the tendril. And that's where I would shade the most uh, to give it the look that it's sitting up on top of the rest of the background pattern. And here I'm just giving the petals a little bit of character with some shading, some really dark darks in the corners. Here's the underside of the tendril, right? So I'm going to go ahead and shade here. So that's just like the start and now I'm going to go back in and blend with my Prisma Solvent Blender and if you have just a tortillon this is where you would blend away from the graphite that you've laid down. You want to get a nice smooth transition so if you blend sometimes you might want to lift with your uh, kneaded eraser and then blend out again until you get the right transition. The solvent, I have to be very careful not to hit too much on the black ink because even though it's supposed to be permanent, sometimes it picks up. I'm also always cleaning my solvent blender in between. See how that picked up a little bit? made it muddy. But I think you can see pretty quickly how much more three-dimensional this looks, right? That's why we want to do the shading. Ah, it's picking up, darn it. I must not have let this dry long enough, but no worries, I can go over that. So as you can see, I like to layer up my colors. I'm even going over the red with an even darker red here, and I add yellow here and there just to bring out those yellows that were in the paper. It's more of a cadmium yellow. just so that they're all kind of coordinated. So I'm going to continue on with my color shading, color layering, and then we will come back and embellish with our white charcoal pencil and or our white uh, jelly roll.
So I do want to warn you, if you're using the solvent blender, this does pick up the black ink when there's pooling like in the fescue here. It's really dark, right? Or in these areas um, where I go over and over to darken the stripes, right? So you really, really either have to wait a long time for this to dry or use a different pen. I have found that the Copic pens, the Copic multi-liners do not bleed when even when you put the solvent blender on them. So either you have to learn to be really, really careful or use different ma materials and or you can also blend with lighter colors or a colorless blender pencil. So right now I'm going to stop here. I know there's always some finessing that we can do, but I did want to show you that I'm just going to go over now and make some little white dots on top of these henodromes. with my jelly roll. Look how pretty that is. Just adds another dimension, another layer of texture. And it's really fun to do. as long as your jelly roll cooperates. Mine is being very be well behaved today. I think I got them all. And then, oh, here, I had to go back and correct that one. You can also then take your white General's charcoal and, and you can add some light highlights up here on the tips of the petals maybe on the band here. You can add a highlight here and there on some of these tendrils just so that it brightens up. Adds a little sparkle. Even here. Just go around and give it some love. You can blend out your generals if you'd like with a clean tortillon without any graphite on it. You can even smudge it a little with your finger. You could probably try using your white colored pencil which might make it an even a smoother transition. But I like the jelly roll because, or the um, general's charcoal because if you don't like what you did, you can easily erase it. So I might go back and finesse this a little bit and like where some things might seem covered up, I can get my black pen out again and go over a line here or there that I need to restate and blend and accent. And I would say, let's call this one done for the day. This is Hollis with Henna Drum, and I hope you have as much fun drawing and shading it as I do. Don't forget to add your chop and sign the back and date it. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to another Lunchtime Tangle with you next time. Bye-bye. That's it for today's Tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work, 
and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.